check out this slide right here. This is important to understand the the, why you have to change the way you market. If I asked each and every one of the visitors on today's webinar to uh, tell me about their business, you would all say, oh, yeah, we got great service and good products and or good offerings. We have a great staff, a super systems. And you would all feel that you had a great inside reality going on. The problem is you're trying to reach those prospects. And you can see those prospects over on the right side. They're the little green circles. Now, what's important to differentiate is that some of those little green circles have question marks, and the other ones have dollar signs. The difference is, is that the ones with the dollar signs, they're ready to buy or join up with your organization today. Not a problem. They're pretty easy. But the other people, the ones with the question marks, they're often ignored in marketing, and that's really, really important to talk about. If we know that someone's interested in doing business with us, but maybe not quite ready to buy yet, they're still a valuable tool because we can market to those folks and turn them into revenue down the road. So what has happened is you tried to take your company's current reality, the black image, and you try to put out your own marketing messages, but you get rebuffed by this market noise. What's market noise that's standing in the way of getting to your prospects? Market noise could be you're saying the right thing to the wrong people. You're saying the wrong thing to the right people. Maybe you're delivering your message in a way that people don't want to receive it. A good example is I'm personally always on the road traveling, working with clients, speaking, and so forth. So if you send me a piece of direct mail, it sits in my little in bin on the corner of my desk, and every two weeks I come and very unceremonially dump it all in the basket because I'm not interested in receiving my information that way. However, I have an iPhone in my back pocket. So if you send me an email and it's something that I'm interested in, I have the ability to respond very quickly and on my terms. So you have to understand exactly how your clients want to receive your information. Maybe they're migrating now from traditional email to using Facebook as a way to communicate. Well, you have to be on Facebook then if that's what your target market enjoys. So today we're going to talk about building this marketing bridge, getting you from your current reality, changing the way you market a little bit to get around that market noise, and reaching both the customers that are ready to buy today and also building a database of the ones that are interested in doing business with you, but maybe we'll get their sales a little bit down the road. You have to understand why this is so important to change our behavior, and this is the essence of the 30-minute marketing plan. There are seven new stages to the way people purchase. The first thing is they realize there's a problem, they recognize that, and they have some kind of pain associated with that. In the case of, let's say, a company, they're tired of their computer network going down, and their pain is we're losing productivity, and we don't know how to make sure that our people are as productive as possible. So we start the information search, the search, which is number two on the list. What is information search? That's going out there and asking all of your friends, family member, colleagues, whoever it might be, that you have this problem, do they know of anybody? The typical example would be, hey, does anybody have a good handyman for the house? Very few people have good recommendations, but you're always trying to find that person that will obviously come on time and do the work they promise. So now we go through the information search. In that search, we might have heard of some of the companies that we're looking at, and that makes us a little bit um, closer to those companies. And that's where you get your emotional preference. A good example is the Toro lawnmower that you see in the photo right there. My business partner, Mike Lieberman, had an interesting scenario. His old lawnmower finally gave up after many, many years, and he started what we're talking about now. He realized he had a problem. I need a new lawnmower. He started working on the information search, went on the Internet, talked to friends, who's happy, and so forth. But then he realized that he had an emotional attachment to Toro brand. His dad and dad before him always used Toros, and he realized, I'm going to buy a Toro, or at least I think I'm going to buy a Toro based upon the research that I have. Well, now you have this evaluation of alternatives, looking at all the things out there. My goodness, the Internet has made it so easy to research different options. Want to buy a new TV? With just a few keystrokes, you can find the TVs in your price range and what people are saying about them. So the next step that people go through is that evaluation of the alternatives. But in the case of my business partner, Mike, we kind of already know that we want to buy a Toro, so we're spending that time rationalizing why the Toro is the better purchase. At number six, the purchase occurs, but then at number seven, there's a lot of post-purchase evaluation, looking at um, uh, uh, prices after you've even bought it, looking at what people are saying about a Toro lawnmower online. These are all part of the post-purchase evaluation. And during that part also, we're looking for some recommendations. I bought a Toro. I'm really happy. Let me tell some other people. Well, if we can understand that these are the seven stages of the purchase, then how are we going to tailor our marketing to support these seven steps to make sure that we could really match up with the way people want to buy? 
And talking about that, let's talk about this big switch in buyer behavior. You can see here there's two columns. There's the mass media approach, which is the traditional advertising model. And then there's also the reality marketing approach, the way that we do it, so that it's a little bit different, a little bit more geared for smaller organizations and businesses, and obviously a lot more geared towards the way people are buying. If you look at the left column under mass media, you have the old-fashioned ways that we used to do marketing. We would do advertising, expensive things like TV, billboards, print, and radio. We would do telemarketing to reach out to those people that are, might be interested because they fit a demographic. We would go to trade shows and try to connect with the, the buyers of our products as they walk up and down the aisles. And then we would spam them, of course, and send them lots and lots of information, not permission-based, but just because we felt that that demographic should be interested in what we have to say. You can see some of the descriptive uh, phrases used down at the bottom. This whole mass media approach is very interrupt uh, interruptive, and it requires a big budget, like some of the bigger companies that are familiar with advertising, and there's a low return on investment. If you do a big ad campaign with a lot of reach and a lot of frequency, you will get customers from it. The problem is you have to spend a lot of money to get those customers, and maybe there's a better way. Think about also how dated this is. We have things like the do not call list that block out telemarketing. We have spam filters on our computers and servers to block out emails that people might want to send us indiscriminately. And if you've ever thought about how you might have recorded or DVR'd a show on TV these days, you never watch the commercials. We figured out a way to fast forward through those commercials because they're just interruptions in our entertainment um, uh, format. So it's really, really important to understand the old way of the way people used to do marketing. But take a look at the new way, which we call reality marketing. Search is the first thing that you see there. People are dying for information on their purchase. If you remember the previous slide where we talked about the seven stages of purchases, one of them is research. And here we offer lots of things like videos and ebooks and white papers to educate people while our company is the obvious choice to do business with. Well, that's incredibly valuable because if you're putting it all out there and saying, look, these are all the facts that you should know, well, obviously those facts should point to the reason that they should do business with you. Websites are critical. Um, any company without a website in 2010 is considered foolish. Any company with a bad website gets a bad um, feeling for the people that are coming to their website and introducing themselves to the company on first glance. So a website is a key component to your marketing program where you could tell your whole story when they want to hear about it, not when your salesperson wants to tell them. And things like email marketing are very affordable, still the number one source of communication in the United States aside from all that social media buzz. So. We want to make sure that we get people to give us permission to talk to them and then start dripping on them and building a case where our company is the obvious choice to do business with. You can see down at the bottom that this whole exercise is permission-based. It's all about the prospect, not about hammering them on the head with your message. It requires a much more modest budget, and it is a high return on marketing investment. If you're sending emails once a month to your entire database and you get some orders, well, that's great. The cost of sending those emails is virtually zero. And to get a couple of orders gives you a high return on marketing investment, as opposed to our previous example where we're doing a lot of expensive advertising and then getting the same handful of sales. And you can see the difference to spend nothing to get sales versus spending a lot to get sales. So this is really important to understand your target market first and foremost in a good strategy. Make sure you're communicating in a way they want to receive the information that you want to send them and that it's all permission-based. You're like, welcome me into your world and I'll be glad to help you with whatever pain or problem you have as opposed to the old model, which is let me force the information upon you and hope that someone will be reading it at exactly the time they have pain. 